Welcome to Horry County Community Digest here on Horry County Community Digest on Info. I'm your host on Horry County and Herb Malsman. We're about to spend 30 minutes at Children's Museum of South Carolina in Myrtle Beach. Uh, the piece was done a while ago. It was produced a while ago and when it was produced, Alice in Wonderland was being exhibited at the museum. Always a fun place to be. Alice in Wonderland is no longer there, but there's a great new uh, exhibit there now called Everybody Eats. So uh, another fun exhibit. Check it out. Uh, while you're listening to you might want to check out the link Children's Museum of South Carolina here at uh, Ori County Community County uh, Digest.info so let's head on now to Pam Ross and Children's Museum of South Carolina and and uh, Alice in Wonderland here we go, follow me for me, this is my second visit here. I was I was with the, in the museum here about a year and a half ago at Christmas time, had to do a to do a tour of the museum. But now we're doing it for you folks here on WRNN 1450 AM. Our guest and guide today is uh, is uh, Pam Ross, and and Pam is the executive director of the Children's Museum of South Carolina. It's a little quiet here than the last time. The last time was a little Christmas time. You had like hundred kids here or 98 anyway hi Pam and uh, how come so quiet I know I was quiet but a little odd uh, well you're earlier Actually, our doors haven't even unlocked yet, so this is why we're really quiet right now. And what do you expect? Now, our tape date today is uh, Thursday, March 11th, 2010. Of course, what is expected today? Do you have any, any what's going to be happening today here? Um, well, what generally takes place is oftentimes we have field trips that come to the museum. We have, right now, we have a lot of Canadian visitors that are in the area for Can-Am Days. Okay. So those families will come to the museum as well. And then we have our regular membership members that are able to come. And a lot of times during the day, if we don't have field trips, it's smaller children because the older children, you know, as you know, are in school this time of day. Okay, so a lot of the children coming through will be Canadian. Uh, is there any sort of a culture? A shock for them here. I mean, the, the things happening in Canadian museums that wouldn't be hearing here, the, the sun, the surf, the sand, the surf, and all that, or they just, is, is for some of this, is this in a new experience, or they, you think it's commonplace for them? Uh, Canada has some um, children's museums. Uh, there's over 350 in the United States and worldwide, and so the one thing that children's museums offer, regardless of how big they are or where they're located, is that they provide an opportunity for families to interact and learn and have fun together. But they could be learning something about, uh, let's say, shells and snakes and things that aren't indigenous to them. They would learn it, so they may be picking up some new experiences here. Oftentimes that is true. So regardless of which children's museum you go to, you do get a different experience. But the basics are the same. Okay, so we're at the, just give us a tour, and then we're going to talk about Alice's Wonderland, or Alice in Wonderland. Alice's Wonderland is the traveling exhibit that we have right now. But that's a very hot subject right now, yeah, so we'll get into that as we go. Okay, you're the guide, so go for it. Pam. Okay, um, as we enter the museum, uh, we have a sand area uh, with interactive play that is is uh, situated in a boat so children can have access to the boat. And they, everybody loves the sand and a lot of times they like the sand not in conjunction with the beach because they want to deal with the water and unlike the beach they don't sit in the sand so we don't have to worry about diapers and sand and clothing as well. Oh so you read my mind I was going to say that the kids get to <laughs> sit there. <laughs> no um, actually they don't. We have stools around the boat on the other side so that they can have access to all the interactive manipulatives that are in the boat but they don't actually sit in the sand. And it's a fairly small boat. It's not yeah. a large size. Yeah. It's a probably the sand area is probably, good. yeah, something like that. Okay, so we're moving along now. Can you find squirrel, frog, bear, and fish? <laughs> oh, they're going to be someplace with it. Oh, I see in the, in the uh, yeah. mural here. We have flip boxes in the mural. Um, this wall was actually, des uh, we designed it and one of the art classes at the Academy for Art, Science, and Technology built the wall for us, a group of students. It's a class project. And the wall actually has lift boxes so that you can find the squirrel in the tree. You may find the frog on the lily pad. You may find a fish in the water. And also what you find on this wall is you find tactile experiences, like there are real pine combs that are stuck to the tree on the wall. Uh, the, uh, there's turf put on the wall to make it feel like the grass. There's different types of carpets. 
Right. Uh, so what this wall provides the visitor is a, a, a visual uh, experience as well as a tactile experience in that they touch and feel different textures and things as they... Right. I was also saying that the bear you won't find in the... Well, you, you can find the bear anywhere here except up the wall. But we don't have one on the wall. You don't have one on the wall. <laughs> we have a deer, though. Yeah, so, although, so there's no bear here, uh, but you want you you can find a frog on the say a fish you won't find up in the tree. So I'm going to say the fish is in the behind the box there. <laughs> Probably so. That's usually what families do is the parent engages the child into guessing what they would find in this particular area. But there's no bear. Uh, the bear is not visible on the wall. You have to look really hard to find the bear, but it also includes over on this wall. Is as it well. in the cave? <laughs> You'll have to experiment. Okay. You'll have to okay, find. There you go. I have no need for me to take the, the fun out of it for you. And there's a dragonfly up there, kind of stuck there, uh -huh. and caterpillars. Uh -huh. and all. Okay, so uh, Collins' kids, and I think Collins is a was a, 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 a young boy who died. Uh, too early, way too early. Is, was that? Um, our discovery classroom is sponsored by Collins Kids Discovery uh, Lab classroom through the David Bennett Foundation at CCU. And um, to answer your question, yes, in a tragic accident. And what was his name? Um, his name was Colin Raven. Colin Raven. Raven. So that's what happened. Okay, the David Bennett Foundation, Collins Kids. Discovery Lab Classroom. Okay, we're moving with you. Okay, um, in this area you'll see it's electric, and it's electric. It's sponsored by our good friends at Santee Cooper, and what we have is a World War II generator, and the kids can open and close the circuits that actually control the power to this city, which is a small replica of Myrtle Beach, and when they pedal, if they pedal fast enough and generate enough electricity or enough power, then the little city lights up. But there's no, you don't have the museum here in this. No, not in that seascape, not in that scape, we don't. <laughs> is that a diorama? <laughs> diorama? Well, it's, it's not. A, it is a great miniature replica of the beach maybe in times past, although we've, they have done a really good job of incorporating some new you got to get to do the museum in there. Well, we may end up having to do that. I think we had this discussion the last time we were here. <laughs> we about we, okay, there you go. Uh, we have a circuit table here where kids can build circuits. We have a, most adults remember playing with a um, light bright. And what we have here is a large light bright that's like three foot by four foot. And it has large glass tubes, that color tubes that you can put in it. So everybody, young and old, always enjoys a light bright machine. And it looks like uh, L-E-X. Alex. Somebody Alex. named Alex was Somebody in here yesterday afternoon and probably put their name up there right before we closed. Alex has a key to the place. So <laughs> keep it up. And this is the magic bus right this here. This is part of our magic school bus exhibit. <laughs> um, in between the seats on the magic school bus are interactive manipulatives for kids to experience. And then inside the magic school bus, um, they can take a journey, as is projected on the front, through with Miss Frizzle. And this also, uh, when you have the groups in here, uh, where they're going to go next and all that, is, is there... Uh, we have different things that go there. Um, sometimes, I think we're doing, uh, Miss Frizzle goes to outer space this time, so she's taking them to outer space. We have Miss Frizzle goes, uh, takes them through the human body. We, we have different types of things that we put up there, uh, depending on what's going on in the museum. Who's Miss Frizzle here? Uh, Miss Frizzle is part of uh, the character in a book series by Scholastic Books. No more Miley Cyrus or Hannah no. Montana. She's moved along. Wow. Miss <laughs> Frizzle's what? been around a while, though. Miss Frizzle. Frizzle has been around. She's very well known, and she's been around a while, and she leads kids on imaginary journeys through different places and tries to give them a different <laughs> perspective of what they're looking at. There was no Miss Frizzle when I was a child. No, nor was there when I was. I had to find my own imaginary little yeah. trips. <laughs> okay. uh, we have our animal acts area, our... Um, uh, where they can go in and they can put on animal masks and animal tails and act like they're that particular animal in the museum in the forest on this uh, scape here. We have a mirror maze where you can look in the mirrors and try to write your name backwards or maneuver a pencil through a, a maze looking into a mirror without looking at the paper, okay. which is more difficult than it sounds. What's with this deer's tail? What happened to this deer's tail here? Well, Nothing happened. What we did was we actually, from a taxidermist, obtained a piece of hide off the tail of a white-tailed white deer. And that 
when so when kids touch it, they actually get to feel what that looks feels like. I'm, 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 Go ahead. So Enjoy. This is a, oh, look at this. We're for the young and the young at heart. Yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. actually the well, yeah. I thought I thought somebody grabbed this tail and No, no, no. Alex uh -uh. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. This is in Collins Kids Discovery Lab classroom. This is where we have birthday parties. We have guest speakers that do things. We also have a lot of animals in this area. This guy, yeah. yeah, currently we have some finches. We have a Chilean squirrel that is uh, called a Daegu. And we have a guinea pig. We have two chinchillas. And we have some turtles and geckos and different things that we have in here. Two chinchillas. A few more of those. You're going to make a little <laughs> something around. No, no, no. Our chinchillas are for kids to um, interact with. And, and they do. we do take the guinea pig out and the chinchillas out for the children to touch them. I was uh, looking at a thing yesterday in the USA Today, and, and I guess uh, the the uh, the publication date for that for that issue was yesterday, March the tenth. Uh, and they're using finches like in dog fighting, in like rooster fighting. They're actually pitting finches. finches against each other in blood battles and blood to the death. Well, they're so small. That would I mean that that's just not. Is that that's is, not something that we would ever <clears throat> condone. Is that the end of the world, do you think, or what? Is that, is that a sign? Did Nostradamus say <laughs> that as soon as they start pitting finches against you, it's against yeah. each other? That's, that's really, it's kind of a little scary. Yeah. Well, our finches are not here for that purpose. <clears throat> our finches are here. A lot of times, uh, maybe one has lost a wing and can't be rehabilitated. Bring me so the winner. I always think about the lobster when you walk into the restaurant and it comes out with one claw. Yeah. And the guy says, what happened? Well, it got into a fight. So well, the customer says, well, bring me the winner. Well, we... Uh, we Fitch lost the wing. We do an animal recovery program with Ark Animal Hospital. And so sometimes we get animals that something's happened to the mother. And we work with the, the help raise the young until they're old enough to release yeah. into the wild. And, or sometimes we'll get like a finch that's got a wing that's been destroyed in fighting or, you know, whatever <laughs> naturally happens. And so we end up keeping that bird and re trying to at least make its life comfortable. We always put a note on there to the kids so that they'll know what happened to it originally, that type of thing, and why it's here. Um, so that's usually what happens with our animals. Right. Well, I spent the, uh, let's cut that from them. We're back. Uh, I, I spent a, a couple of weeks in the, uh, in the Amazon in Peru a couple of years ago in the primary jungle in March of 99, and there was a capybara there who's one of the mascots in the village there, and its mother had been killed by uh, natives for, for food, so the capybara was an orphan. So you'd come out in the morning, everybody would come out in the morning, and there was a routine stick your finger in its mouth. You could feel it had like a second set of mm -hmm. teeth in there, mm -hmm. and it would suckle on your... You oh, know, really? on your finger was the strangest feeling. Uh, well, you know, that was part of what they did to help that animal survive after the death of its mother. So. And there was a great winged trumpeter, so when you came out, you'd scratch it on the head and get all oh, you really? get it to, to the mask. Okay, we're well, moving along, and I know we're going to get, here it is, Alice's Wonderland. Yeah. I'm most curious, so we're here? We are starting to go into Alice's Wonderland on this curious adventure. All right. This is a traveling exhibit that came to us from the Children's Discovery Museum in San Jose, California. This is the first time Alice's Wonderland has made an appearance in the state of South Carolina, so we're very excited about that. And unlike the movie, this uh, traveling exhibit is geared for small children. Unlike the movie, Johnny Depp does it again. Gee whiz. It, I think it, it it wiped that avatar as far as the opening I week. Think it did. Alice in Wonderland, it's supposed to tell the inside story of Alice in Wonderland. Is there an inside story? I don't, I don't know if there's an inside story, but it's not certainly the story that I grew up with with Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> this liked, exhibit, however, is more like that. Well, Johnny likes getting dressed up. He does dress up lately, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the guy, Sweeney Todd and all that. He's getting into that. Yeah. So, okay, so some of the uh, support provided by MetLife Foundation, Skull Foundation, Fund Integrated Archive Systems, Brian and Deborah Stole, Stole Family yeah. Fund, uh, National Science Foundation, and what's that one down there? Support provided by University, University of, of California. California, Santa Cruz. So, yeah, we want to give some uh, 
we want to give a little promo there. Those and are the, um, those <laughs> are the um, sponsors for the traveling exhibit. And this traveling exhibit um, was fabricated for the Children's Discovery Center in San Jose, but it travels <laughs> in three-month venues around the country, and museums pay to have it come to their museum. Well, let me get this out of the way right away. That knew that that, that knew its way from San Jose. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you know the way to San Jose? Based on the book uh, Alice, Alice's Venture. Alice's the actual name of the book is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Okay, so we're here now. Into we're okay, in what are we doing? We're the Manhattan Tea Party. <coughs> Um, we here um, the Manhattan Tea Party is set up so that uh, what you'll see is as we go into the exhibit you'll see excerpts from the book um, this one says you should say what you mean the march here went on and I do Alice hastily replied at least at least I mean what I say that's the same thing you know not the same thing a bit said the Hatter and this this Mad Hatter's Tea Party is set around Alice having um, a conversation with the Mad Hatter and the Dormouse and there's places for children to sit around the table and around the table there's some interactive components to the exhibit one is there is um these boxes that have, they're actually called smell boxes, but they have different flavors of tea in them. And so when you manipulate them so that air passes through it, you can smell the different types of teas that you might have at an actual real tea party. Hmm. And then on this part of the table, um, there is an interactive exhibit with um, water, oil, and syrup. And by manipulating the pumps at the table, you can create air bubbles that move at different speeds depending on if they're moving through the syrup the oil or the water. And you can predict which one you think will move faster. Wow, and what's that big globe here with the water in there? <laughs> um, <coughs> this simulates the water in the teapot itself. So that when you look at it, as we look here, it talks about lenses and how water bends objects when you look through and they look different. So you look at refraction and of uh, rays as they move through water. And then this one has a heating element in it that actually when you press the button <coughs> inside the teapot, the convection currents that are moving through the water appear and you can see the water boiling right. in the teapot. Yeah. And in this part of the tea party, milk. as you, yeah, this goes into your milk, goes into your coffee cup, when you <coughs> press the button, you can see um, how the, the milk drops down into your teacup. Wow. Through a stroboscope that's in there. Wow, look at that. Yeah. And this, cool. um, I'll read this said Alice finds a mad hatter, a drowsy dormouse. Dormouse? Is it D O O R? I see. A dormouse? A raven, march here, a raven march here sitting down to eat, uh, sitting down to tea at a very odd party. Time is in turmoil. Logic is lost and table manners have been forgotten. I wonder what fun a party could be when questions are answered with riddles. Is it Dormouse or Dormouse? It's Dormouse. How's it spelled? D-O-R-M-O-U-S-E. I thought it was all the time, but there was D-O-O-R. <laughs> okay, without giving the number on the Mad Hatter's hat, without giving the number now, we'll keep it this for the end, it, would that be the size, no, without giving it, if that's the size, would that be the size of the hat? No. Because in this style, and there's a size? In this style, 10, 6. Oh, so you said it. Oh, so that's a, I was going to have a little trivia. How, oh, okay. how big was, that. Is, that a t is that the style of the hat, or the size of the hat? <laughs> okay, folks, uh, wipe that out. Okay, uh, uh, jurors, you're tr requested to forget about that. So the trivia question is, if that's the hat size, what is what is uh, the mad hat is hat size? Okay, we'll get to that. Make believe me to talk about it. All right, and this is part of, um, you know, the book is based on lots of riddles and lots of uh, uh, sentence structures that are different from what we might normally speak and so and it incorporates a lot of animals because Alice is out in the woods and so this is kind of like a spin word type of uh, component to the exhibit where they can they can spin the different uh, sections and they can choose the words that they want to use to create the riddles or the sounds. Well, we're going to do it. This is something we're about to do. So, oh, this look at this whole oh, yeah. deal is wow. And here is an area where they can make their own Mad Hatter hat. In their own size. In their home, yeah. And this is a zoistrobe, so that when you get down here, 
and you look through the slits and you spin it, you can see at the, all the animals moving in the Alice's Wonderland. I get a little dizzy and this is? This is a giant prism so that when you move the prism, what you see on the, on the sides of the prism is Alice. Skipping and yeah, and running and running and all that. It's, uh, uh, so, it's, uh, wow, Alice is. And as we know, Alice follows Rabbit wow. to a hole, and then falls down into the hole. This is going to be quite and an experience here for the children. Is the hole that Alice enters. This is a rabbit hole. Do you go in there? Can the kids? You can't. Kids can go through the rabbit hole. They come around the other side. We'll walk to the other side. Let's give it before we move along. That as we go along, your address here is. A twenty-five hundred one North Kings Highway. Our website is www.cmscikids.org. And the phone number here. 843-946-9469. And you're right with Myrtle uh, uh, Shopping are, Mall used to be? We are across the street from the Myrtle Beach Convention Center and Sheraton Hotel in the same building with Office Depot. And if you go to Office Depot, you're right here. This is, this is, uh, this is great stuff. And so when you come, you the come out of the rabbit hole, there's a component to the exhibit that has a globe that is illuminated. It has two cameras on each side, and there are two um, screens here. And what you do is you can use these no uh, glass knobs to turn the globe and to move the camera. So, you know, the question was, Alice, if you went and entered the rabbit hole, where would you come out? So if you locate the camera that you're looking at, let's say it's on Saudi Arabia, the top screen shows where your camera is, and then on the other side shows you exactly where you would come out if the rabbit dug a hole straight through the earth. Wow. So the old phrase, I'm digging a hole to China, if you really want to know where you come out, you could come here and put the camera on China and it would show you where you would come out on the other side. And I have a feeling this child is significant here, this, 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 like a photograph an old time you find. Would this be Lewis Carroll's Alice? Yes. This, we're looking at Alice right here. This is, this was the inspiration for uh -huh. Alice. Is this is Lewis Carroll's daughter or niece or... A family member. A family member, and this, wow, this is so good. My, um, I've got goosebumps. This is Alice right here. We are, this is just. And here, and you know, in the book, the Red Queen orders Alice to play a game of croquet, and uh, the hedgehogs, and the mallets, and the, or the flamingos, and there are no, but the only problem is, is Alice says there's no rules to the game. So what we have in this area are the three games that the Red Queen instructed and ordered Alice to play. So they can manipulate these and play the games that Alice played in the book. All right, and just before we go on, I'm assuming that that's Alice in that in that in that portrait there. I'm assuming that was yes. Alice. Mm -hmm. Okay. To okay. My knowledge it was. All right. Okay, you're listening to Oray County Community Digest, not no longer calendar. Uh, we're at Children's Museum, South Carolina, 2501, 2501 North Kings North Highway. North Kings Highway, and we're in the Alice. Alice's Wonderland Traveling Exhibit. Alice's Wonderland Traveling Exhibit. And here, you know, in the book, Alice is trapped into the hollow doors. And, you know, when she digs through the rabbit hole, the book says she finds a cookie where she's actually, Rabbit sends her in to get his gloves. And instead of finding the gloves, she finds a box of cookies and the cookies say, take one. So Alice takes one and she eats a cookie. And when she does, she grows really big. And then she'll drink something and she'll get really small. And in the process of doing this, she gets trapped into this hall of doors. And so when you look through this part of the exhibit, the room that we see looks perfectly normal. But then when you walk around the other side... Sometimes I get the impression Lewis Carroll was, would alter his state from time to time because you really, you really can't come up with this kind of stuff sitting there, you know, just having your little cup of decaf. You know, something, something was giving him a... He was getting... Something was giving him a rush or a buzz. <laughs> and so now we're entering the actual hall of doors. And what we have is this hall, and there are ten doors in here. One door you actually go through, but all the doors have an interactive component that you either look through or press or do something with, and it engages your imagination depending on which door you look through. I'm feeling a little disoriented here. <laughs> well, that's because the hall, the, angle, it's, it's the hall of doors is built on a slant, so that as you progress and go into the hall, it's probably about 20 feet, maybe 25 foot deep, and about 14 feet 
15 foot wide. As you go from the front to the down. back, right. you're actually walking down and the ceiling slants down. So what happens, just like in the movie, Alice couldn't stand up because she grew too big. And so as an adult, when you go, you may not be able to stand up totally, or you may, but it gives you the illusion that you're, that you're getting bigger and the room's getting smaller. Sounds like my place. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Did you see the movie Being John Malkovich? No, I did not. Folks, and Pam, I mean, now that we're standing here with the little door, Blockbuster, whoever has it, Netflix, or do, you, do you subscribe to Netflix? No, I do not. Do you get videos and DVDs at all? Occasionally, I, I don't watch a lot of TV. I uh, tend to watch the news and Ooh, few other things. Oh, want to stay away from those things. I stay away from the news. <laughs> anyway, there's a movie, Being John Malkovich. John Malkovich is in it. it. Yeah, and Cameron Diaz, is, mm -hmm. Diaz and John Cusack. That is a, a it's such a, a bizarre, and this reminded me of the little doors and all that. <laughs> go, go see, folks, Folks, I, I, I have a, a movie recommendation. Being John Malkovich, and then the Big Lebowski too. Oh, We've okay. all seen that, but being, it reminds me of being John. But what a great film! What fun that is. Now, anyway, sorry to get us away from that. That's okay. But a surrounding Alice's Wonderland and the main part of the museum is our totally tubular exhibit, where uh, where kids can come and this is actually a Velcro wall, and all the tubes Velcro on, and they can shape their own tracking ball system, and then there are different balls in there they can roll through. We are, uh, of all things, we went down to about four minutes. It's really moving along. I've got to do this and in two parts. And I forgot to show you, this is the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland. Right. So when you sit down, sit down right there. Okay, I'll try. A little small here. I've broken two chairs in my life, by the way. I want you to look into the mirror. I'm there. That's me. The look for, that's the Cheshire Cat. I'm the Cheshire Cat. And you turn into the Cheshire Cat when you sit down at this vanity table. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are children coming in now. Uh-huh. Yes, we're open now, so we're starting to get people Look, in. They just, they just, have, just having a wonderful... Folks, I mean, folks, you have grandchildren coming in, or children or great-grandchildren. Make this the very first stop. On your on your tour when you get to Myrtle Beach, and to, anybody listening, just ask for a tour. Come in and look at this. Is just so that this ch ch children, as soon as they walked in here, they were busy and involved mm -hmm. immediately. I wish we could stay. Well, I'm going to come back and do a second part. We just got this Alice in Wonderland. We've got a um, gym modeling exhibit where they can pan for gems in a water plume. Right. Uh, we've got a express yourself art area where they can make and take things. They're, see, they're building a house. They're building their own house. Yeah. In the area. You still have the hospital and the dental chair? And we do, but right now Alice's Wonderland is in that area and it's in storage. <laughs> We're a small facility, so when we get something that big, we have to take something out. So there's no dental work going on here? No, no. The dental office is in storage right now. Oh. Alice's Wonderland will only be here until May 15th. Oh, I wish it would be here forever. Yeah. It'd be great. Uh, and then you can make pizzas we here? We have a pizza truck so they can make pizzas and the oven lights up. We have a, a gear power wall where they can make gears and, and change the gear system. We have USS Kids Afloat where we have a water bed embedded into the deck of the boat and the raft on top and they can get in and put the life jacket on and have the motion of the water without the actual water. And folks, you know, when we came in, the place was quiet. <clears throat> Nothing happening. It was, it was, and now it's open, and it can't be open for more than five minutes right now, five, six minutes. And children, as soon as they walked in, as soon as they walked in, found, found, th and you, you hear the sound right away. So you're hearing children are running around. This is just, this is just a wonderful place. Yeah. This is a wonderful place, and it, and it really ought to get more exposure. And, uh, Folks, tell you, anybody with children, grandchildren, this is the first stop on the way. Give a, an address, a phone number, and a, hi, an address, a phone number, and a website again. And then, my goodness, we have to go. Uh, the Children's Museum of South Carolina, we're located at 2501 North Kings Highway in Myrtle Beach, directly across the street from the Myrtle Beach Convention Center and Sheraton Hotel. Our phone number is 843-946-9469, and our website is www. 
www.cmscskids.org. Phone number again? Phone number is 946-9469, or our website is www.cmscskids.org. Okay, okay, uh, folks, what is the size of the Mad Hatter's hat? And uh, this is going to be airing, uh, okay, let's see, what, what's the size, do we think, is the Mad Hatter's hat? Why would I spoil the fun? That's your trivial. Question. Okay, so the next time the next time you hear me on air here with Dory County Community Day Digest, you'll hear the man had his hat size. Hope that's hat size. Uh, hope folks have forgotten it. This will be fun. Okay, you've been listening to Ori County uh, Community uh, Ori County Community Digest. I'm your host and fellow Ori County and her mossman Pam Rose, Executive Director of Children's Museum of South Carolina. You're fun. Thank you. Thank you for being.